Welcome to the uh, afternoon session of the first day. Uh, so the first speaker is uh, Yoshihiro Tonegawa, um, who is going, I think, to mix the first two approaches, right? So you have seen the geometric approach, and the PD approach, and now you're going to see the GMT approach that somehow mixes everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> please. OK. Um, first, I'd like to thank the organizers, particular uh, Francesco Maggi, for the uh, very kind of invitation. So today, uh, the title is uh, this uh, existence and regularity theories for, uh, of brachyfolds. And as uh, uh, Francesco just uh, said, uh, this is the uh, mean coverage flow. But the setup is uh, not a smooth setup, but the one that you use a lot of tools from uh, geometric meta theory. And what I like to do uh, during this week is to uh, give you the idea of the, well, first give you the uh, precise definition of this uh, bracket flow. And uh, also, um, I'd like to explain the uh, recent existence uh, results of the bracket flow, which. Uh, uh, is very general, actually, surprisingly. And uh, also, uh, there's a very nice uh, partial regularity theory for this bracket flow. And uh, all these results are very technical, but I hope that uh, I give you some kind of idea or the, some of the main uh, ingredients of these theories. Okay. So today, uh, what I'd like to do today is really uh, to give you the uh, some uh, background materials and also uh, uh, precise definitions of uh, bracket flow. Okay, so um, now, so so let's see. Um, so if you have a okay, so let gamma k t be a family of um, surface where here i is uh, usually is either uh, zero infinity or or some uh, finite. Uh, interval, okay, uh, which is uh, in Rn. And uh, we, we've seen this mean coverage flow already, but let me just state again. Uh, is, uh, is mean coverage flow if the, uh, if the uh, velo normal velocity vector, so uh, when I write B, uh, this is normal velocity. vector of uh, gamma tk. And the h uh, always uh, refers to the mean curvature vector. OK, um, so with this notation, if, if the, uh, this normal velocity uh, is equal to mean curvature vector. So that, that's the definition for smooth case. And uh, as we know, even for static situation where v is equal to 0, that is, a mean coverage equal to 0, uh, well, we could think of, uh, say, soft film. And soft film can have a singularities. And so the mean coverage flow could have potentially a singularities and moving at the same time. And uh, as you saw in this morning, also, uh, even if you start out with a smooth, smooth surface, mean coverage flow develops typically as singularities. Okay? So uh, it is natural to consider the uh, certain weak solutions of a mean coverage flow. And that, that's what uh, is uh, called the bracket. Well, well, there are many notions, in fact, of these weak solutions of mean coverage flow. But one uh, that I like to talk about is uh, this uh, bracket's mean coverage flow. Okay. So the point of view of this mean brackets mean curvature flow is the following. So uh, instead of looking at uh, this family of surface, okay, instead of looking at family of surface, the point of view of this brackets mean curvature flow is looking at the surface measure instead of surface itself. Okay, so brackets mean curvature flow is is really is looking at the mean cover uh, the surface measure defined by this moving. Um, uh, surface. Okay, so it's almost like one-to-one -one correspondence that if you're given a k-dimensional uh, surfaces, of course. Uh, by the way, yeah, okay. So this is <laughs> notation I have to explain. So this HK is a k-dimensional Hausdorff measure.
And uh, when I write this way, uh, this means it's a restriction of, uh, so this means, uh, this means that it's a measure that's defined by uh, house of Kelimer's house of measure uh, restricted to uh, gamma t. Okay, so that's, that's a notation. All right. So, given a family of uh, surfaces, surfaces gives you naturally a surface measures, and so the point of view of bracket flow is to look at this measure instead of surface itself. And once you know what the measure is, of course, you can sort of go back to the surface, right, by looking at the support of this measure, right? So it's more like one-to-one -one correspondence, not exactly, but more or less. Now, uh, the, if, so the, the way you uh, characterize, so you try to characterize mean curvature flow by seeing the, uh, how this measure behave, okay? Uh, let, I often write this measure as mu sub t, okay, as, a, as an indication of measure. So the question is that if it's mean curvature, how, how can you characterize, okay, so how can we characterize mean curvature flow for measure, for measure? That's something I'd like to do. And uh, so let's check. Let's check uh, the following. Okay, so uh, now, well, first let's consider the uh, any smooth family of surface. Okay, just uh, given a family of, family of, uh, well, let's consider first smooth case, okay, and then move on to uh, Non smooth case, given a family of smooth uh, gamma t, okay. Now, what I like to just sh uh, think now with you is we want to check how this, um, how the, uh, this measure, which is defined from this family of type surface, uh, behaves uh, that uh, so okay so with this I think mu t of phi uh, how does how how for maybe I should say for this measure this behaves. or a test function phi. Okay, so phi is a test function, which is, uh, let's say C1 compactly supported, in Rn cross time interval to a uh, positive. So this is a non-negative test function. So this is, this is a test function. For this mu t, okay? So to understand this uh, uh, this uh, motion, uh, I check what this uh, this this. Uh, so you think this? So, so the idea is, you see, we want to consider the weak solution. So whenever we t think about the weak solution, we you know have some test function and check what it does to the test function. So let's do that. So let's check how this. Um, let's see, uh, gamma t x t. So let's compute what this is, okay? So you are integrating this test function on this moving surface, and just let's think this is smooth for the moment. See how this changes in time. Now, uh, this is, I, I just tell you the answer to this. This is, uh, comes out to be by uh, the following. This is number of phi, this is uh, gradient with respect to uh, x and the velocity minus uh, phi times h comma t dot velocity minus this, yep, plus d phi dt 
hk of x. Okay. So uh, what is this? Uh, you see, this first term is more like a directional derivative of phi in the direction of the motion. You see, you have to differentiate this function in the direction of the motion. Okay? This is number, v dot, number phi dot b. And the second term, this is inner product, but this is, the, this is more like a change of the volume. This is more like a first variation of the uh, uh, area. So that comes out to minus phi times h dot b. Okay? And this is the, just a time derivative of this okay? with respect to t. And uh, so uh, this is fine. This is for any, any moving surface, not necessarily mean curvature flow. Okay? So this is just any moving smooth surface. And uh, uh, OK, so let's write this as I'm putting uh, carefully a number to the equation. OK, so this is 1. And uh, oh, if, if the uh, velocity happened to be a mean curvature, then, well, we just substitute this uh, mean curvature. So we end up having a, this uh, is equal to gamma t of number of phi, uh, just putting together minus phi a is gamma t dot t plus d phi dt, okay? This is fine, right? Just uh, replacing b by h, then you get this, okay? And in particular, uh, note that if phi, we, if we just choose phi equal to 1, as a test function, uh, if you let phi to be equal to 1, then this is just 0, and this is 1. And yes? Oh, yeah, this, if, this, if this, ha this surface is a, this motion is a mean curvature flow, then that's, that's what you have, right? But also equal to mean curvature, yeah. Up to this point, it's just any moving surface. Uh, yeah, I welcome any questions during the lecture, so please ask questions. Okay, yeah, so I'm saying that if this is a mean coverage flow, this has to be satisfied for any test function, right? Now, if phi equal to 1 in addition to this, then we, are, we have uh, just uh, the formula that we saw actually in the morning. Uh, so if it's 1, the uh, right-hand side is just... Uh, uh, integration of 1, so it's just the uh, k-dimensional measure of gamma t is equal to minus of uh, mean curvature square hk, which is less than equal to 0. And uh, this is uh, saying that, you see, this is mean curvature is an area decreasing flow, and also uh, it's a L2 gradient flow, as uh, Professor Huskin's uh, lecture, um, okay? Now, uh, conversely, so converse is more important, right? So, so here's a claim. So conversely, in fact, this does somehow characterize the uh, in curvature flow. That, so that's somehow non-trivial fact. Conversely, if, uh, if we have the following, so if we have a, for given any test function, and non-positive uh, test function, if for any test function we have um, this, inequ this, this but inequality, is, here is important, is less than equal to. Uh, the, uh, the rest is the same. Okay. The claim is that this 
implies, in fact, the normal velocity has to be equal to mean curves of vector. Okay. So that's the first claim. That's uh, somewhat important to understand this bracket law. Bracket law. So let me show you. This is a case. Okay. I hope that this is clear. As I said, that if it's a mean covers of flow, this is satisfied with equality. But conversely, what I'm claiming here is that if for any non-negative test function, if this inequality is true, then velocity has to be equal to mean covers of vector. So in some sense, this characterizes the mean covers of flow, at least for Sue's case. Okay. So uh, the proof is uh, not so difficult, actually, it's just uh, a bit of, uh, I, I don't explain this part usually in, in the lecture <laughs> because of the lack of time, but I think we have enough time for this. So, so proof, so you know, here I'm assuming that everything is smooth. Okay? So this is smooth case. If it's not smooth, then actually this is very difficult to prove, but for smooth case, it's, it's clear. So from uh, one and two, okay, that's one and two, uh, now, you see, this is true for any smooth flow, okay? This is true for any smooth flow, and I'm assuming this, right? So I can subtract these two, right? And uh, from one and two, I, by subtracting these two things, and note that, after all, this left-hand side are the same quantity, you know, that's just a derivative of this quantity, so they are the same. Now, the only difference is, of course, this part, Okay, oh, sorry, <laughs> two is, uh, one is this guy, sorry, sorry. This is satisfied for any flow, so, sorry, uh, this part is the same. The only difference is this velocity. Yeah? So, if, if you subtract these two, we end up having uh, this gamma t of uh, nagra phi minus h gamma t dot this normal velocity minus h gamma t, uh, this is less than equal to zero, okay? So this is true uh, for any non-negative test function. Okay, so I, I, it's not pretty so clear why I'm doing this, but let, let me just continue this, okay? Because I have to finish this part, okay? So uh, is this clear? Just subtracting one and two, you get this. And just for short notation, let me write this as W, okay? So uh, the claim is uh, this, for any non-negative test function, implies W is zero, okay? That's what I like to prove, okay? So the claim is W is equal to zero, okay? So why is this so? Uh, because this is actually follows more from uh, scaling, Note that this has to be non-negative, okay, so that's the only sort of trick here. It has to be non-negative. There's a reason for this, but um, now just to fix, fix any arbitrary point on uh, gamma t, and uh, now just choose any, any function for, for the moment, C1 compact. Doesn't depend on time, doesn't have to depend on time. Now, and uh, let f and also uh, lambda to be uh, arbitrary, which will be zero later. Okay, so just fix x zero on gamma t. Okay, so gamma t x zero. And uh, now uh, I define phi of lambda of x to be uh, this function. Okay, so uh, this is a function which we will see why I do this in a moment. X minus X zero divided by lambda, okay? So I just define this function. And this is a non-negative function still, of course, because phi is a non-negative function. And now use this phi lambda in this 
three. Okay, so this is equation three. Okay, what do you get? Um, now, you get, um, so substitute this. Now you have this derivative, so this, because uh, you, have, you have to differentiate with respect to x, the lambda comes out, and uh, you have, um, let's see, you have uh, gamma t, and here's a lambda to minus k, uh, you, lo you lost one lambda, okay, by differentiating, phi of x minus x zero, divided by lambda, and minus also lambda one minus k, h, gamma t, and the phi of x minus x zero. Okay, so that's uh, one, let's see. So here is dot w, right? This is less than or equal to zero. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now, uh, you do a change of variable, right? Uh, let z to be uh, x minus x zero divided by lambda. Do this change of variable. Okay, so now, uh, this, this is a k-dimensional house of measure, so under this change of variable, the lambda to the minus k comes, uh, lambda to, uh, let's see, basically dhk of x is equal to dhk of um, z dx, yeah. yeah, lambda k comes out, right? So um, you end up having, um, with this uh, change of variable, uh, this become uh, the following. So your, your manifold gets stretched as, well, this is a bit of abuse of notation, but this means you move this gamma t, well, you do a parallel, trans, parallel translation by lambda z, x zero and then stretch by one over lambda. And then, uh, so here is a cancellation so you, have, you, have, and you end up having phi of z and uh, minus h of uh, gamma t. Here's, um, well, actually it doesn't matter very much, so let's stay with this, phi of uh, z, right? Dot w of uh, x become um, x zero plus lambda z and dhk with respect to z. This is less than equal to zero, okay? Sorry? Ah, did I make, hmm? Sorry? Uh, it's, this is fine, right? This? Oh yeah, lambda, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, that's right, that's important. <laughs> yeah, that was a point. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, everybody's following the computation. <laughs> so, now, when lambda goes to zero now, now this, what happens to this one? This one is the one, you see, this is nice smooth surface, so after stretching, this converges to tangent space, right, as everybody can agree, yeah? That's converts to tangent space at x zero. And this one, well, is the same. And now this one, as, as it's pointed out, here's a lambda, there's extra lambda, so and when lambda goes to zero, this just drops out, becomes zero, right? So you, you don't, you're left with this, um, only with this uh, uh, first term. And here, again, also, this w, uh, as lambda goes to zero, this becomes just a constant vector. So in fact, you are just with this is less than equal to zero, okay? 
Now, it's not that, well, this phi, I could choose this phi to be the following, for example. Uh, it's, it's easy to see, uh, for example, um, let's see, what was, I can claim that this implies w has to be zero because, um, now I can choose, let, let this tangent space, just for simplicity, uh, to be, um, I can just, uh, without loss of generality, I can choose this tx, uh, this tangent space to be, if I want to, rk cross zero in rn, just by uh, doing a, a change of variable. And then uh, I could choose phi z to be, for example, a function which is phi tilde of x1 to xk, which is non-negative, and plus one plus uh, some function which looks like this, um, x0 dot x, okay? Uh, in the neighborhood near, near this tangent space, near rk cross zero, okay? Well, note that if you stick this in, uh, well, by, first of all, this is non-negative uh, because near this tangent space, uh, this, this is almost zero, right? Uh, you see, uh, well, but notice that this w of x zero is in the tangent space, uh, uh, sorry, the normal to the tangent space because uh, this, this vector is, after all, is, is a normal vector a normal velocity vector, and uh, this is mean curvature, so it's uh, again also normal. Okay, so this this vector belongs to the normal space, and uh, now uh, okay, so and uh, this is, is like zero near the near the uh, tangent space, and also number of phi of uh, x is is uh, phi tilde, and uh, okay. And on, on, on this, uh, on the tangent space, this is equal to this plus, and uh, W, let's see, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. What I mean is that, uh, um, anyway, <laughs> maybe you can check this yourself. That if you use this kind of function, then you can check that uh, this uh, number of phi becomes just a W zero itself and w0, uh, okay, so that's just a constant actually. And the phi of x, hk, okay, and that's less than equal to zero implies the w of x, sorry, w x0 has to be equal to zero, okay. Okay, so uh, that, that's a proof, yeah. Right, so uh, this means that um, you know this this has to be equal to zero, and this was uh, any arbitrary point. So this this argument works for any point and any time. Right, so so this inequality actually um, characterizes this normal velocity it has to be equal to mean curvature vector. Okay. So um, I can use this as a weak formulation for this mean coverage of law. That, that's, that's the point. Now, there, you might wonder why I have to care about this inequality, and there's a good reason. Uh, there's one technical reason that this mean coverage of law could actually have the situation that the sum of the portion of the surface can vanish instantly. For example, if you, well, physically, maybe you can imagine, say, soft films. If you're playing with soft film, sometimes soft, soft film pops, right, goes away. And that's sort of physical motivation, even though that's a kind of weird or not probably correct. But also there's a technical reason also that's more serious, that, that if you want to show the existence of this type of solutions, you cannot stay with equality, uh, unfortunately. You won't actually want to have equality, but often you can't get this equality. But in, only you, you, at the end, you only end up having inequality. So that, that's another reason, right? So uh, just, uh, uh, just uh, 
summarizing what I uh, proved up to this point. So the point is uh, that, uh, so let me write this as a, in the form of proposition. Proposition 1.1 is that um, a smooth family, okay, so this is true only for smooth family, um, gamma t is mean curvature flow if and only if uh, if and only if uh, that uh, for any non-negative test function, uh, we ha and also any two time t1, any, any t1, t2, where t1 and t2 are in, in this interval, time interval, uh, we have uh, this inequality but with integration in time, okay? So just a little bit of a little bit. Uh, if you integrate this inequality, you you end up having this uh, this t1 to t2 and dt, okay? So this I call number four. So I, I think it's not so difficult to see that. What I wrote, if, you, if I integrate what we had from T1 to T2, you end up having this inequality. But if you have this inequality, going to the differential form is also easy, right? By, uh, by dividing this by uh, T2 minus T1 and then take a limit, right? And then you get what you had before. So, uh, this, so this is a way to characterize, so this is a way to characterize, um, characterize mean curvature flow, okay? At least for smooth case. Now, motivated by this, so I, I move on to uh, non-smooth case, okay? So this is, if it's smooth, then this is fine. But by motivated by this definition, notice that this is integral formulation. So, for example, uh, we don't have to have uh, surface nice surface, as long as surface is measurable, for example, it makes sense, at least, okay? So it doesn't have to be smooth surface for this to be, to make sense. And also, um, uh, well, we have this mean curvature vector, but it doesn't have to be a mean curvature vector which is defined everywhere, okay? As long as we have mean curvature vector defined almost all time, almost everywhere, we'll be happy, okay? Just we can make definition of this. And to do that, uh, I need to introduce various uh, notions from geometric measure theory. And uh, I could just keep talking about this geometric measure theory for the rest of the time. So, I, but I, of course I shouldn't do that. So let me just very uh, give a quick um, review on these uh, tools from geometric measure theory. I hope I can finish this today. Okay, so um, now first uh, definition, 1.1. Okay, so uh, first uh, set gamma in Rn is called uh, is called uh, countably characterizable, countably characterizable um, if if the following is true, if there exists a Lipschitz map. Fj from Rk to Rn, uh, where j is uh, j is going from one to infinity, one to three, and so forth, and such that uh, uh, this image of this uh, Lipschitz map. covers uh, gamma almost everywhere, okay? So, um, so this set K is called counter characterizable uh, character if there exists a sequence of Lipschitz map going from Rk to Rn, 
And uh, the image of this Lipschitz map covers this gamma up to measure zero with respect to k dimension. Yes? Sorry? Oh, sorry, that's right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. J from one to infinity, sorry, yep. And if you are not familiar with this no notion, I think you, you be, I, will, I think you'll be happy just to think about n equal to two k's. Okay, so if you are not familiar with this, and k equal to one, and then the typical uh, object you should think you should think of this is just, a, for example, networks. Okay, so some, something which looks like this, because the sort of object that I like I like to flow is this type of things. Okay, like a network uh, with uh, say Lipschitz curve. Okay? That, that's kind of typical uh, one that you should have in mind. Okay, now let's continue with this notation, not definition. So wh what I like to flow is this type of set in the end. Okay. Let's see, so next, oh, yep and also some other notation, definition 1.2, is that um, if gamma is, um, well, in addition, I, I assume HK measurable, or Borel measurable is good enough, but let's see, and count to be K rectifiable, And also, um, and locally finite, locally finite measure, finite with respect to um, HK. Uh, that means really uh, for any compact set, um, the uh, HK measure uh, of um, this gamma is finite. Okay, so that's what it means. Uh, let us uh, denote this, uh, let us write, in this case, because I, I, I uh, have to have this quite often. Uh, in this case, I just write gamma to be in rec, rec k. Okay, so this means uh, this. Okay, so th that is measurable, country characterizable, and locally finite, then I write gamma to be in rec k just for shorthand for writing this again, yeah? Okay, so now proposition, which is uh, also very well known in the, this uh, field, is uh, so-called um, the existence of tangent space. Tangent space. Okay, but with a note. Uh, so this means um, for, su for, suppose we, uh, in this gamma is uh, just as what I define rec k. Okay, for this, this uh, set. Then uh, what we know is that then uh, there exists a so-called almost, uh, no, sorry, approximate tangent space for HK almost everywhere on gamma T, a gamma, there exists a unique tangent space, so-called approximate tangent space, so this is, um, there exists a unique uh, tangent space, k-dimensional subspace, okay, subspace, called uh, approximate tangent space. Which is denoted by Tx um, gamma at So that's, that's just a proposition, which I don't prove, okay? Now what this means is that uh, 
uh, so this for if you see if you have a something like network like this, well, uh, there there may be some singularities, but these singularities are measure zero typically, and away from this kind of singularity, you you have a nice sort of uh, C1 like behavior, and that's that's basically the idea. But you have to express this in, um, in the sense of in the sense of measure, so um, this this means really. Uh, Whenever you have this tangent space, this means that if you look at um, this kind of uh, grow up limit, okay, so you move gamma, I mean, you, you move the, the origin to x, and then you do um, sort of blowing up by lambda, one over lambda, then at, this, at such kind of point, uh, as lambda goes to zero, it converges as, as a measure to, uh, to this um, k-dimensional, uh, the k-dimensional measure restricted to this tangent space. So th this is as a measure, okay? So w when this is true, you say that this guy is an approximate tangent space. And the claim here is that for almost all point on gamma, such tangent space exists, okay. and you need, it's unique. So this is something I assume. <laughs> so if you've never seen this, I, I think it's a bit strange, but hopefully that's all right. So it's, it's a nice class. This count be, this rec k is a nice class. And you see, uh, you, you can define this tangent space almost everywhere. Now, uh, so, the, so <laughs> some more notation definition uh, is needed. So, uh, so I'd like to consider uh, the flow of this rec k, basically, but I need a bit more, okay? Um, a Radon measure. here on Rn I, uh, is called a k integral. Okay. If there exists um, a rec k gamma, that just which, are, which is defined, and also uh, there exists some theta defined on gamma, a taking an integer, positive integer, almost everywhere. That's HK measurable function. Okay, then just uh, such, such that this mu is expressed as a theta times HK restricted to this gamma. So, um, if 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 uh, this lambda is of this form, it is I call it it's a integral. And this theta is called a so-called uh, uh, multiplicity function. Or multiplicity simply. And this multiplicity function is the one that um, accounts for uh, some kind of folding of manifold. As, as the um, manifold moves, sometimes you have to um, consider the situation where uh, some portion become like sort of a folding. And then in that case, the theta becomes, say, for example, two, okay. and so forth. I hope this makes sense. And finally, <laughs> yeah, I need to define a lot of things. <laughs> um, to define this uh, bracket flow, well, I need to uh, have the, this notion of the mean, generalized mean coverage vector. So, so this is the last one, I hope. Yeah, I, I guess that's the last one. So that's, uh, right, so uh, I, I need to define the generalized notion of mean coverage vector. 
Okay, so uh, now, now first, if this gamma is a C2, C2 k-dimensional surface, okay, then uh, we know the following formula. This is so the first variation formula. If you're given a, a C1 vector field on Rn, okay, so given a, G, a vector field, uh, this divergence of this uh, vector field integrated over the surface is equal to a minus of the uh, mean curvature of this surface dot g. Okay, this hold uh, in general for C2 surface. Okay, this is number five. Where this divergence is just uh, divergence restricted to the tangent space of this uh, surface. Okay, so here is a uh, divergence. Uh, okay, so Tx. Oh, and also, um, I should say that when I talk about di uh, this tangent space, I always, I often, I, not always, but often, I identify this with a matrix representing a projection to, orthogonal projection to the tangent space. Okay. This is orthogonal projection matrix. Okay. So uh, now, I hope that this makes sense. I, I, whenever I have this k-dimension subspace, I have an orthogonal projection to this subspace. And uh, when I write this Tx gamma of ij, this is IJ component of this orthogonal uh, projection to this subspace. And if I understand this way, the divergence of uh, gamma of G is nothing but just IJ adding up from 1 to N. And uh, let's say Tx gamma IJ and GI GXJ. Okay, so that's just definition of tangent space. Okay. Now, uh, this number five, this, this equality is really a first variation formula for the surface, but also this characterizes the mean coverage vector as well. Okay? Whenever you have this, some vector field which satisfy this equality, uh, this has to be mean coverage vector. Okay? So that's just also characterization of the mean coverage vector. And motivated by this first variation formula, uh, so motivated by this, And we define the so-called generalized mean coverage vector. 1.4 is that for a k integral manifold, uh, sorry, k integral Radon measure, sorry, Radon measure, new, which is uh, of this form, theta h k of gamma. Um, if we have, um, we, if we happen to have a vector field, if we satisfy that equality, then I say it's a generalized mean coverage vector. So, let's see. So, um, if if there exists um, some vector field H uh, such that. See, um, this, let's see, uh, let's see, divergence of Tx gamma of G, D mu, is equal to minus of H dot G, D mu, for any vector field. So, uh, 
Um, oh, by the way, yeah, so this is really nothing but just, okay, in a different notation, it's, a, it's just a gamma of divergence of Tx, uh, gamma G theta times Thk, that's what it is. And uh, here is the same, it's this one is nothing but just minus uh, gamma H dot G and theta Thk. So, okay, I, I hope that I make it clear. If you happen to have this kind of vector field H, satisfying this equality for any C1 vector field, then I say that H is called a generalized mean curvature vector for this mu. That's a good question. <laughs> it actually, as a result, it becomes normal, in fact, almost everywhere. But that's a sort of hard theorem, yes. But anyway, at, for here, I, what I'd like to point out here is at least is that, note that this left-hand side is always well-defined for integral, K, sorry, a K integral uh, Radon measure because this tangent space exists almost everywhere. You know, by, uh, what was the name? by the pre proposition 1.1. You see, for, for this gamma, note that this tangent space exists almost everywhere. So this, this side is well defined. The question is if there exists such age. Okay, so, so here is that if there exists such things, you know, it may not exist, but it, if it does, I say it's generalized mean coverage vector, motivated by that formula phi. I hope that that is clear. All right, so now eventually, okay, so I think uh, it's almost time. Now finally, uh, I can define a bracket mean curvature flow, okay? So, that was good. I could <laughs> define it. It's the first achievement of my lecture. So the definition, right, let's see, definition. Okay, so this is 1.5. Okay, a family of um, Radon measure uh, let's call mu t. Okay, uh, it's called uh, Bracket flow if the following uh, true. Okay, there are some four uh, sort of natural assumption. Okay. Now the existence is another story, but here today I'm just talking about the definition. Tomorrow I, I'll talk about the existence, but so so I want to have this as a sort of natural generalization of the usual mean coverage flow. So um, I ask for almost all time, not all time, but almost all time, I want this mu t to be k integral, okay? So that means uh, mu t is of this form. Mu t is equal to some uh, integer values function times a k-dimensional measure restricted to some uh, country rectifiable set, okay? So that's, you see, um, if I don't have this, it really is just a, you know, a k-dimensional surface measure restricted to some country k-rectifiable set, but I allow some integer multiplication, okay? As a possible, as I told you, maybe the, the, at some point, maybe the two surfaces may become together, become maybe two or three and so forth. So I allow this kind of freedom, but, and number two, B, is that um, I want this to be sort of uniformly uh, finite measure, so uh, I, I need to assume something, some finiteness for all K and for all uh, compactly supported time interval. Uh, I want the um, measure to be finite, uniformly.
Okay, so this is really a fairly weak assumption, which is usually satisfied for when, when you talk about existence. So this is really telling you that locally, the surface measure is sort of finite, okay? Otherwise, it's not so nice solution. That's, these are sort of a very weak, sort of weak assumption. And next, I assume number C, three, is that for almost all time, I, uh, the mu t has a generalized mean curvature vector. Uh, and let's see, which is denoted uh, by uh, H mu t, just uh, for short term. And this is uh, also L2 in space time. Okay, so for such that for any uh, compactly support, compact set and any compact time interval, uh, this uh, is L2. T and uh, K of H mu t square. This is finite, okay? So, and also measurability, for example, is satisfied, okay? So I don't worry about the measurability of these quantities with respect to time and space. I assume that they are measurable without saying it. And the last one is what, this is a characterization as a mean curvature flow, okay? So this means mean curvature flow. So this is for, for almost all, for, uh, for all time, T1, T2, T1 and T2 are in this interval. And for all non-negative test function, uh, we have this uh, inequality that I discussed at the beginning. So this is the one that we saw before. Phi of uh, d mu t, where t is subtraction from t1 to t2, is less than equal to t1 to t2 dt. And uh, this is the same number of phi minus phi mu, mu t dot h mu t. And this is uh, plus d phi dt d mu t. This is satisfied, okay? That's called uh, number six, okay? So if all these are satisfied, I say it's bracket flow, okay? So uh, just to repeat, uh, this is really telling you this is more like a you know, surface measure with possible multiplicity at least for almost all time. And this is uh, just finiteness. This is existence of L2, in L2 mean curvature vector, but in a generalized sense. Okay. Well, this is sort of needed because to define this quantity because you see you have this H dot H here. So I want this to be finite quantity at least, right? So that's sort of, again, this is natural, very natural, considering this assumption. And note that uh, everything is, you know, here's mean curvature, it's L2, so this makes sense. And, uh, you know, here everything makes sense, at least. Okay? Uh, by the way, in the literature, this is often called the integral bracket flow. Sometimes uh, you could talk about um, so-called rectifiable bracket flow, uh, not asking this integral, in integral part, just uh, if you don't, if you can allow, <laughs> Theta to be a sort of real valued function, for example. But I, I just uh, don't discuss that part. Okay, and uh, also, um, I think I'm out of time. The last definition, uh, okay, is that uh, if theta t is equal to one, okay, uh, for almost all time, 
Uh, in this case, uh, mu t is uh, called unit density bracket law. So the unit density means really, literally, this multiplicity function is just stays one. Okay, so there's no folding along the way. That's that's uh, the definition. Okay. Okay. Um, now, so I just described the definition today, and not, you know, saying nothing about the existence part. And uh, so t tomorrow, what I'd like to t do is uh, about the uh, general existence theory. You know, th this is seem like requiring a lot of things, right? As, I mean, there's several, like four conditions. But actually, there's a very nice uh, existence theory um, uh, that, that's done just recently. Um, and uh, so, uh, and after I, well, I, I'd like to give uh, maybe two talks on that. And then uh, the last two talks, I'd like to talk about that. Again, a general re regularity theory really starting from this, okay, for unit, so-called unit density bracket flow, uh, you can actually show that, you know, this seems like a weak solution with inequality, you know, how can you expect something this to be regular? But surprisingly, if you have this unit density assumption, this, this guy is actually almost everywhere smooth, in fact, even though, you know, a priori assumption is extremely weak, but it's almost everywhere smooth, in fact at the end. So, um, okay, so that's all for today.